Hey everyone, here are a few more, I guess you could say, new things in InDesign that are a little bit a little bit hidden. Some of them are pretty obvious, but you guys will be like, well, duh. But but I wanted to share them with you. Uh, and you'll probably find a lot of these as you just start working through here. But one of the things I, I wanted to show you is, let's say, if you work with margins and columns. So if you guys are on a master page, a regular page, and you come up under layout, margins and columns, if any of you work with layout adjustment, you know in the past we've had to turn it on if we wanted to have the, the layout or the objects adjust with the layout as far as margins and columns. But now in CS5, we can just turn it on right here, enable layout adjustment, which is really cool. I think that's helpful. <laughs> like I said, you guys, these are pretty small things, all right? But there's a couple of cool ones. Take a look at this rounded corner box right here. Let me zoom in. Now, the rounded corner thing, I think it's pretty big. That's awesome. You guys can click to edit the corners, you know, go out and use keyboard shortcuts to do one. You can see right there, all click, shift click, whatever. But one of the things that always drove me crazy is if I did a rounded corner box and if I did a vertical justification, it really wouldn't work that well, especially if the box was a little smaller. Well, that actually works now. So what I'm talking about is if I click on a text frame, let's say, and I go to object, text frame options, take a look out here, you'll see that we've got our vertical justification. And if I say, let's say center, turn on preview, you'll see it actually is pretty much centering itself. Like I said, in the past, it usually have a pretty hard time doing that with a rounded corner frame, especially if the frame was a little bit shorter. Okay, so you guys can kind of see exactly what it's doing here. It's not doing that, that bad of a job. All right, another thing here, which is kind of subtle, but <laughs> so I think worth mentioning. I'm going to take this text over here and just put the rest of it down here. Let me put a little frame down there. And I'm going to shorten this up so it spills over. If you guys take a look at solo adventures here, I'm going to throw a paragraph rule on there. So, you know, control alt J, command option J, I believe on Mac. We'll get your paragraph rules. There's a new feature in here called keep in frame, which at first I was like, what? It doesn't work. But I realized what it works for. Check this out. If you guys put a, let's say, a rule below and turn it on, this thing's never, not really going to turn on because the the, the uh, rule itself is pretty much always in the frame because there's text above it. But if you turn a rule on, let's say for a rule above, turn that on, you'll see we have the keep in frame. Now, here's what I'm talking about. If I go to the offset and push it up a little bit, let's say, you're going to notice how it kicks out of the frame, and sometimes that can annoy you. So if I turn on keep in frame, look what it does. I actually I used that the other day. I was like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway. You guys don't use paragraph rules, it's really not going to help you much, but anyway. Let me zoom out. Uh, another thing, too, if we want to, let's say, transform a couple objects, we don't have to group them anymore. So let's say that I want to take the green box up here. If I click on that, I want to take the blue box, and I want to take the picture and make them wider. In the past, I'd have to group them or use some other method. Now, this object is locked. I want to unlock that. And... Anne Marie of InDesignSecrets.com, which is a great site, you guys. You guys should visit that one. Um, showed me this or told me about this. If you ever lock an object now in CS5 InDesign and you click on the lock, it'll unlock it. That's kind of cool. All right, let me shift click to select. I'll grab all these objects. You'll notice that I've got the one bounding box or bounding frame on it. And if I resize, look what it does. So now I don't have to group objects, which is really cool. Really subtle, simple. All right. Now, the other thing, too, is if you guys have the... Um, Content grabber, I don't know how many of you guys are getting used to the content grabber. It, it means that it, I don't have to select the direct selection tool. I can just click and drag and move the picture inside. But sometimes you don't want that. <laughs> so we can turn it off. Yeah, I always forget where this is, actually. If I go under View, go to Extras, you guys will see Hide Content Grabber. So that'll hide that for you. That way you don't actually have that turned on anymore, and you'll have to use old school methods to resize and things like that. One other little thing you'll notice is that if you have room in your control panel, they now put swatches up here for stroke and fill. And there's a couple extra little things you can do. You can come up here and drag onto an object to apply it. And this is very Illustrator, you guys, by the way. And you can also, if you guys click on the menu here, you'll see the swatches panel. But if I click on that arrow up there, if I hold down shift, look at this, tooltip, please. If I hold on the shift key, I get the color panel. So very, like I said, very Illustrator. Um, so we can turn off content grabber. Another thing that I want to show you real quick, delete all guides. Pretty simple, pretty easy. We could do it in the past. You could use a shortcut. You know, there's other things we could do. But they now have it in the menus and in the rulers here. If I right-click or control-click on one of the rulers, you will see delete all guides on spread, which is pretty cool. Last thing. This one I think is big. 
If I come under Window and go to Utilities, you'll see something called Background Tasks. This has been talked about quite a bit, but I want to show you guys this. Suppose you guys have a file, and this is actually a book that I'm updating for Dreamweaver, and I want to PDF it, let's say. So if I go to File Export, I'm going to PDF this thing, and I stick it on my desktop. It can be interactive or print, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's going to go out and export it. Now, in the past, it would sit there and just say, it would kind of choke, actually. It would say, okay, well, you're done using InDesign for a while. But we can continue working now. So I can do all sorts of things. And you'll notice in the background tasks here, it's telling me uh, what's going on in the background, which is pretty cool. And if there's any alerts that pop up, you can see that as well. So anyway, that's a, just a couple new little features that are you know, a little bit hidden. I'm sure you'll find them as you go, but I wanted to share them with you guys.